I want to start with what the sheriff had to say. It was a pretty aggressive statement. He was blasting critics for the rhetoric that he says was aimed at his department. Take a look. I know that Norman is a piece of and you stood behind that white boy with that You won't even stand with your people, you self-serving son of a Really? Okay, Stephen, I'm going to start with you. The sheriff gets up to speak about the case, a man in the state of Louisiana who was shot and killed. Are we talking about the right thing here? Shouldn't we be talking about the case, or should we talk about all the, the hate about how it was handled? Well, you're absolutely right. Look, the, the sheriff, I think he made a great error in judgment in presenting what he did to the public. Look, this isn't about defending politicians who are getting nasty emails. I mean, I get them. I'm sure you get them, I right? Do. We all get nasty emails. But when you're in a leadership position, words count, behavior counts. And I'm hoping that that sheriff wakes up today scratching it and saying, gee, I wonder what I did. This is a period of time where we need uh, leaders who are going to be calm, who are going to unite people together, not divide them. And I've got to tell you, you know, I've always uh, 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 defended police officers, but the sheriff was a little off base this time around. Mo, I don't know what to do here. This is an all new Stephen <laughs> saying that the sheriff is wrong here. What's your take on all this? Wow. Uh, we agree again, Stephen. So, um, you know, I really have to say that I was very disappointed in the behavior of the sheriff because it, the press conference became all about him and his feelings. And so so many times uh, you'll hear the police say this is not about how we feel this is just about the facts this is you know we need to keep the emotions down and he really just came on there filled with emotions saying a lot of things that were very offensive I feel and um, it was just out of line completely all right the sheriff also said Mo that the case the incident had nothing to do with race take a look not a single witness has said up to this day that there was one racial slur uttered during the course of these events and unfortunately a law a life was lost but you want to know something folks two people engaged in bad behavior that day all right mo do you feel like if the situation was reversed if the shooter was black and and the dead man was white do you think we would be saying this was about race because hundreds <laughs> of people were interviewed and the sheriff saying no one said it was a race issue yeah, I mean I, I mean, I think that question obviously answers itself, that if it was reversed, uh, well, first of all, if it was reversed, the person would be in jail for the entire time. They would have never gotten out. But, you know, just let me say this point. Just because there's not a racial slur that takes place at a specific event or a killing does not mean that it was not based on race. Race is a problem that we must face in this country. And it happens the second that a person looks at another person and realizes that they are not of the same race. So just by the fact that Joe got out of his car and uh, came over to Mr. Gaster's car, race was evoked right then and there. You cannot say that it is not uh, a part of this equation because you didn't hear the N-word or you didn't hear, you know, any other uh, negative uh, statement about race. So I think we have to really uh, be honest with ourselves again that when a white man is in a, ra a road rage incident, and this is not Mr. Gaster's first time, uh, when he sees a black man coming toward him versus a white man coming toward him, there will be a different reaction based on that individual's inherent biases or his feelings about African Americans. So you can't automatically, I think it was wrong of the sheriff to automatically say race is not an issue, which we see so often just because there were no well, racial slurs. Stephen? Well, quoting Ronald Reagan, here we go again. Sure. Uh, there is absolutely not one shred of evidence that this has anything to do with race. Maybe during the course of the investigation, which we have to give time, uh, that issue may come up. But, but Stephen, this has let me nothing ask you a to question. Do hold on, Mo, that, hold on. 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 You have to have enough evidence before you arrest someone. So they did go out over a four-day period, and they interviewed over 160 people. They're looking at videos, and then they appropriately arrested him. But to, well, he shot him. Well, he did. But, but yeah, the point is, you have to remember that in that state, they have a stand-your-ground law. All right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't know uh, the uh, complex of that law, okay? I'm not going to stand here and tell you I do. But that, I think, was the reason why they didn't have an immediate arrest. But let's get back to this one issue, and I mentioned this over and over again. 
in your program last week, every single time there's an incident, it doesn't mean that it is automatically a racial incident because one or the other person is either black or white. This was a, 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 an incident that is being investigated. The man was arrested. It was tragic. The bottom line is we have to think about Talking about this issue after the investigation, that's when we draw the conclusions. All right, Mo, Steve, 10 seconds. That's all we got. Seconds. What do you think? I just want to say that, first of all, a lot of people are arrested constantly, black people in particular, without a sufficient amount of evidence. But secondly, you know, to say that every incident and all the time it's not about race, it, it, it's just really sad to normalize these uh, events that happen over and over and over and to say that race is not a product well, well, of well, it. Well, Mo, if, I, I would I, lead I, you, know, I, I would say this to you, Mo. I would offer this up to you. I would hope that one's passion about this will also be delivering message about the black on black violence in Chicago. You never no, hear no, no, about no, no, that. No, no, no. That's a great that's a great excuse that white people no, love to use when we're talking people. about No, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, because right. that is the truth. That is not an excuse every time we're talking Mo, uh, about Mo, I agree uh, to this. Hold on a second. Hold Steven. on. We have to Mo, leave it there. Talking. Mo, we have to leave it there, but I want to tell you I don't no. think it's okay to say that's a great excuse that white people use. No, that because is an excuse Because making a generalization that like that, it really no. is awful. That's right. I would Stephanie, never, never make a excuse. statement like that, Mo. S to me, Steven, you're, you're a passionate woman. Let me finish, Steven. please. No, you're let a me passionate finish. woman who believes in your cause. I would never Steven. use your okay. race. Every no. time, Mo, Stephanie, Mo every time this offended. conversation, every time this conversation comes up on any news channel, and somebody talks about a killing that happens between a white person and a black person, the officer, normally the white person on the panel, says, but what about black or black, no, uh, black on black crime? Steven, we got to go. We got to leave it there. Okay. We got to leave it there. Constantly. Merry Christmas. Leave it. So do not try to make this into something else. That happens constantly. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.